Hi, my name is Hamu, and I'm in the class of 22, so I'm a freshman, and I'm in the Underwood division. Um, I'm Suvi, I'm class of 21.5, so I'm a sophomore, and I'm majoring in IID. My name is Amy, I am class of 22, and I am in UD planning to major in IS. Okay, my name is Faiz, I'm a 21.5, and I'm currently majoring in Bioconvergence. No, but I read the book. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen this before. Um, I've never watched the full movie, but I have seen this scene multiple times. And I think his breakdown was like built up too for a really long time. And like I think um, it's very indicative of like what normally happens. Like I feel like with this specific movie, like I understand a lot of what he's feeling, what he's going through. From what I know, uh, when he was younger, his aunt molested him. So like he was traumatized by that and like that led to like depression and other like mental health issues yeah i don't think i can really comment on how realistic it is because i've never experienced it or seen it before myself but i think the i guess the cinematography really shows the impact and gravity of how serious his situation is personally like uh i have like experienced like a few like episodes but like and I think it's like really realistic because like like he kept trying not to cry or like trying not to feel because like it can be overwhelming sometimes yeah I think that part was like very relatable to like what I experienced so yeah I think that was kind of realistic Heard of it, but I haven't watched it. Same, I haven't watched it, <laughs> but I've definitely heard about it. I myself have no personal experience or knowledge about how a drug addict would react. I mean, I only mean, heard of it, but it does seem like what would really happen, you know, when they find out that their drugs are taken away or something and they would go pretty extreme to get it back. You've said that this show is getting a lot of accusations, but like from what I've heard like or like read on the internet, compared to like other shows before, like 13 Reasons Why, like this show shows like a more raw or like realistic viewpoint, like at least that's what I heard. Yeah, so like, I don't think it really romanticizes like drug abuse or like mental health issues here. Sort of scary to watch and like if I were in the little sister's position, I would be like really scared and traumatized. I also agree, it was quite scary and dramatic. Um, I think maybe because it's like a series or a movie that people start to romanticize it. If it was perhaps um, in a form of a documentary or something, maybe people would take away a message of more um, about raising awareness about mental illnesses, perhaps also because um, there are famous actresses and perhaps maybe people want to be like them, so that's where romanticizing starts. For me, growing up in America, I feel like, uh, especially with some of my close friends, I've really seen them kind of go off the deep ends with drugs. Um, and I feel like I kind of see this effect in them kind of really being torn away from who they were like at the end when she's like, you don't know me, like I don't know me either. And that's how I felt like I felt like I didn't know them anymore and that was really rough. But for something like Rue, I think that some things that people won't understand is that like she's saying that these pills aren't hers. So you thinking you're doing something for somebody to help them could really be putting them in a dangerous spot, especially when you're talking about drug cartels and in that realm. But as well, like I'm um, talking about like a lot of controversy that this show is facing. I don't ever think anyone ever can touch on anything. Everyone experiences it on a spectrum, so it's really hard to say whether they did it right or wrong. Recently, um, one would be 
how we have integrated ourselves in the digital world, especially social media. I think the fact that you view other people's lives and you can control how other people view your own can really um, undermine people's confidence and a lot of things that could lead to mental illnesses. Another reason that contributes, I think, is people feeling that they're not the same as other people, like they're different and that they're sort of outcasts because like regarding your identity, like whether it be like sexual orientation or religion or like all your nationality, like if you're surrounded by people who are all like sort of con considered different from you and they like treat you that way actually, then I think that could like possibly lead to mental illnesses. I think mental illness has always been very prominent and prevalent in society, whether you were in the 90s or you're in the 2000s now. Um, and I think it's just more known in our generation because more people want to talk about it and advocate for it and um, really bring it to the forefront of a conversation. But as well, I also just feel like there are a lot more social pressures these days from younger generation because we are the future and we are supposed to be the fixer-uppers of all the past mistakes. And I feel like um, being bred with that mentality puts a lot of social pressures, whether it's academics or it's environmental or it's just having to watch what you say on the internet. And again, the internet, it's such a huge thing. And you know, you put your whole life on there and you broadcast it for the world. And the second it's on there, it, it's forever. So I think there's so many pressures to be perfect and be X, Y, and Z that it affects you more than you think it does on a daily basis. Uh, I think firstly, we have to like destigmatize the whole concept about mental illnesses because even if you have mental illnesses and you like reach out for help, uh, it, the situation wouldn't be as worse if you didn't. But like a lot of people are scared of reaching out for help. For example, like going to therapy or like taking medicine because our society right now doesn't view people with mental illnesses very kindly so like people are scared to talk about like the problems they have for example like depression or like anxiety or because like the moment that they say something about that they're gonna be outcasts again and like their situation might get worse and that fear uh, ironically in turn like worsens the situation because they don't reach out for help yeah i think i agree with that point as well especially in maybe northeast asian countries the fact that you will go to therapy or a therapist or counseling or something like that is very, I guess, frowned upon. I, I think it suggests that there's something wrong with you and you need someone else's help. Um, and I think just raising awareness and having some basis of understanding the other person, especially because our world is changing so quickly nowadays, um, I think just having a flexible and understanding um, mind, I guess. You can start with, you know, just if we know someone who feels down in sort of way, um, we could always approach them. We should always try to take the first step to make them feel comfortable so they can open up and always be there for them. Um, I know sometimes it can feel really pressuring to reach out to school advisors, but um, that is what they're being paid for, so make the check count. Um, and as well, like, I think it's really cliche to say, but spreading love and kindness is really important, you know, like, mm -hmm. Maybe somebody stepped on your shoe on accident, but maybe they're already having a bad day. Don't attack them, don't yell at them. Um, and like, I think it's just about reaching out, knowing your people and like feeling okay to like be seen and be heard by your peers. It's, it's easy to think that like, oh, I don't want to talk about it because everybody else is going through but like your matters. So, you know, make it stinky.